So um, I, I think I'll give a fairly short kind of introduction and then maybe go with questions. And, and the reason for that is I just think, and you can feel it already if you've been listening, you know, it's just so nice to hear other people's voices, even though I have, I'm sure I have a, a beautiful uh, uh, voice. But um, it's, it just uh, really helps. And, and no matter what you ask, we can all go through the door together of trying to get to the essence of what the Bates method is and the essence of what eyesight is and the essence of what a relaxed mind maybe really means. So, so uh, anyway, I'm Greg Marsh, and this is uh, a uh, webinar. It'll last a little more than an hour. And uh, yeah, it's about the Bates method. It's about uh, how stress affects our eyesight, how emotions affect our eyesight. And then at some point, even if we get rid of the stress, we still may have the habits of seeing poorly. And in a nutshell, that would be staring. So I'm standing up, but whether you're standing or sitting, I'm just kind of moving back and forth a little bit. And I want to start us off with a contrast. And even if you've done this little trick before, take a fresh look. You'll always see something new. Okay. So you're moving and that and you feel fairly relaxed just watching the word go by. Your mind loves movement. Okay. And then now stand rigid still and stare for a moment. And just feel how uncomfortable that is. And notice it kind of reminds you of how you feel when you're on your computer, right? So so just even even for a moment, just think of something that's fairly negative that's going on right now, something that stresses you out. And not to be mean, but just just to kind of help show yourself the contrast. It, it, it'll be good. So think of something that's kind of stressful and freeze. Notice your breathing has become kind of arrested. Notice your shoulders and chest are kind of tight in your neck. Okay. Well, these are the things tonight we want to become more aware of and aware of in a way that will help disperse them. Okay, so now keep thinking about that thing that's kind of annoying or troubling or stressing and now start swaying back and forth a little bit. And if you're into the Bates lingo, we could call this the sway. So going back and forth, and you could even do a little, a long swing if you want. But I want you to notice, even when you're swaying just a little bit, in fact, you can even go to where it's so little swaying that you can hardly tell, or somebody might not even realize you're swaying, but there's still something energetic still happening, okay? And if you keep trying to hold on to that problem, as long as you're swaying, as long as you're moving, it's very hard to hold on to it. Do you see that? Okay. So, so this is a profound technique, this swaying, which then becomes, well, in a moment we'll do this, the Bates long swing. But a, a lot of people won't do it because it's too simple. It doesn't cost any money. You don't have to have a special outfit to do it or special shoes or anything. So just feel how good it feels to the mind to move back and forth. And I'm, I'm just going left to right in case you're on the phone. I'm just swaying from the left to the right. So my weight goes on one foot and on the other. And just notice your belly's kind of relaxed now. Your shoulders are starting to let go. You find yourself breathing. These are all good things for eyesight. And now one more time, just stop and stare. Does that feel familiar? And see, you think, oh, I could never do this at work because I have to sit and work. But no, you can. Pretend you're at your computer and now just start a little bit of a, a sway. Do you feel how wonderful that is? I, I want to do a little analogy too. If, um, if you can see this, I'm just 
I've got on a long sleeve shirt and because I'm I'm not in uh, Barbados <laughs> like Jermaine, but um, uh, I'm just putting my finger down. I'm not moving it at all. Putting it on some texture, and it could be the texture of a table or whatever. So I'm putting my finger down and not moving it, and I'm trying to sense what is the texture. And I'm not getting a clue. You could do that with me. Okay, touch something, some texture, some clothing, something like that. Don't move. Just touch it with your index finger. Don't move. And notice your, your senses can't figure out what's going on. They can't, they can't tell the texture. So now you want to feel the texture. Of course, you move your finger. And now the texture, it's all there for you. Do you see the analogy with eyesight? It's like the brain loves movement for, for all the senses. And the, that's how the brain kind of figures out, calculates, and absorbs in the mind, absorbs what's going on. So it really needs that movement. Okay? So one of the most profound things you can do through your day is catch yourself when you're frozen and then start moving. Okay, so I, I said we'd go ahead and do the long swing. So let's do that. Um, again, if you, I'll, I'll say this as if you might be on the phone, um, but if you're on the computer, you can see me. I'm just kind of um, swaying back and forth. And then, and I find in most cases, if I can slow somebody down, like most people will tend to be doing more like this. Now I'm going one way or the other, one way or the other, one way or the other. But I tend to like to slow down more towards this way, that way, this way. And and what I find is that people really uh, start to get better results right away if they slow down. And you know it's an it's all an experiment, and and your natural rhythm might be different. But now, if we want to turn this into the so-called Bates long swing, then as we're swaying back and forth, like I'm putting my weight on my left foot, and now on my right foot, I'll just say one foot, the other foot, one foot, the other foot. And maybe as you put it on the one foot, the other back foot actually comes up a little bit. Try that. Okay. And now... Just let yourself, as you step in the, on the foot, turn that direction a little bit too, and then back, and then turn as you step on to the other foot. Okay. And don't worry if you're doing this exactly right. Okay. Perfection, I think Winston Churchill said, perfection is the enemy of very good. <laughs> so, so we don't need to be perfect. So now let your hands, your arms hang really heavy, just like a couple of heavy ropes, like on the edge of a, a big naval ship. Okay. And then as you turn, let your wrists or your hands kind of just bang into your butt a little bit in each direction. Okay. And notice how relaxing this is for your shoulders. And now uh, you can either open your eyes or close them. For right now, let's just say they're open. And don't try to do too much right now. Just let your eyes slip across the horizon. And just enjoy letting the world slip by. This is the opposite of staring. So this is good medicine. And if you do this in the morning, even a couple of minutes of it, you know, say you do uh, uh, 50 or 100 of them, it, it could recalibrate your whole day. Okay, and then if you're in the supermarket or you're waiting at, well, I don't know, people don't wait at copy machines anymore because everybody has their own printer. But, but anyway, if you find yourself kind of standing around, go ahead and swing and sway a little bit. You know, and um, just 
just see if that doesn't make a difference. Also, this is splendid for if you have a little trouble going to sleep. Okay, stop and freeze and stare for a minute again. And just realize that sometimes you might get yourself in this mindset when you're going to sleep. It's like you're, you're kind of staring into problems. And of course, night is the dumbest time to try and solve problems because everything's dark and you're going to come up with dark answers. So, so just pull yourself out of bed and do 20 or 50 of these lung swings. And that'll help the mind see the eyes stare, but then the mind might be grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. And so this will help the mind let go. Okay. So, uh, cool. Okay. So we've got quite a few folks here and, um, uh, maybe I think I'll go ahead and, and and start asking if people have questions, and um, and then kind of we can steer into maybe other techniques that way. And what I want to say in advance is, even if you just have like reading glasses, or even if you just are trying to stay away from reading glasses, in other words, you have perfect sight. And you know, if we get talking about and feeling. Uh, our way through how the eyes are with something like cataract or, or macular degeneration, you think, oh, that doesn't apply. But the principles do apply. And you can, you can help yourself become fluent and receptive to these Bates uh, natural principles. Dr. Bates being, uh, well, I, I think if you signed up for this, you probably know Dr. Bates and the Bates method is, it's just an an ingenious uh, eye doctor from a hundred years ago who who started noticing that that when people had eyesight problems they were staring and that people who had perfect eyesight were always moving okay and if you if you want to get my CD program it, it goes quite a bit more into some of the nuances of all of that and um, and you can find online a lot of different books about the Bates method uh, the the caveat about books, or at least this is the trap I fell into, is that sometimes we get in a real linear mode. It's kind of like trying to learn yoga out of a book. There's something more magical uh, when you learn it, like like we are right now. So, um, so okay. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, hi, Reed. <laughs> okay, oh. thank you for. Uh, for raising your hand, as it's called here. Well, and uh, so where are you from? I'm in Austin, Texas. Austin. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, I had a question. I, I did dial in late, so I hope this is still in the rhythm of your uh, of your presentation. But I'm sure it is. Yeah. My question is about um, about ramping down with prescription lenses. Mm -hmm. um, I've been, I used a reduced prescription lens of uh, one diopter lower, lower power, but then, but then um, how do I continue that, that um, my progress? You know, one diopter lower than what, where did you start at? I was at seven and then I was wearing like uh, minus six, seven, minus seven, and then I went to minus six, mm -hmm. and and then and I was making really good progress and I felt comfortable, um, but then it, I just kind of stalled out. So I was just asking about what kind of oh great question, get, you know, because that's great, yeah, great question. Yes. So Thanks. so let's kind of go into that and and I'll go into it in a way that it will address because I, I noticed a lot of people were asking whether they were doing reading glasses or or whatever or astigmatism or nearsightedness. It's like, well, how do I uh, find my way down? And um, first of all, how about let's all close our eyes just for a moment and let's, I'm closing mine too. So, so just kind of feel how your eyes feel. 
and notice you can make your eyes a little more tense or a little more relaxed. In fact, look up, look down, look side to side, and then as you roll your eyes, just notice you can really feel all those muscles in your eyes working around. And maybe you've not really noticed them this closely before. Okay. So now you've noticed these muscles. Now there's one set of muscles if you tighten them, and this is the Bates model, if you tighten them around the top and the bottom of the eyes together, they're going to squeeze the eyes so hard that it's going to make the eyes longer from front to back. And that's, so if you get up to what, what uh, Reed was just saying, a minus seven, then the eyes have gotten pretty far longer than normal. And although it seems incredible, sometimes uh, people can very quickly uh, regain clear vision or, or very soon can have a, a clear flash that may last like a half hour or an hour uh, of the eyes exploring, well, what if I let go of these muscles? Okay, and then if you have presbyopia or reading glasses, then you more want to notice, put your attention to the front of your eyes where the lens is, the, the natural lens that's in your eye. And there's a circular muscle around it. And that muscle all day long is tensing and contracting. Not, not in a tense way, but in a, a it's, it's, well, contracting and letting go, contracting and letting go, focusing near and far. Ideally, it's in a real easy, natural way. But then, if, if uh, you have a lot of strain, then the flexibility of that muscle may be thwarted. Okay, so just imagine, pretend that you can feel that. And now if you have astigmatism, just pretend just pretend now that all these muscles are going every which way. Like in Ohio, we used to say cattywampus, where they were going all, everything's all different ways. Okay, and, and um, in fact, here, open your eyes a minute, I'll get out my, my trusty balloon. Um, and, and this balloon, you know, it, it's nice and round, which is how it wants to be naturally. But if these muscles get tight, it gets too long, and if, if these other muscles pull it in, it gets too short, which can be farsightedness. And then that other circular muscle is up here in the front. If you're on the phone, just pretend, <laughs> pretend you can see this. So, um, so it's all a matter of muscles, okay? And, and I'll get back to the prescription, Reed. But, um, but now close your eyes again and just ask yourself this riddle, okay, Who's running these muscles? What is running these muscles? And then you, you think, okay, well, what if I get a tightness in my stomach? Okay, I'm doing that with my mind, right? In fact, what if, you know, they talk about butterflies in your stomach when you're going to speak. Well, that's totally the mind that's doing that, right? Okay, it's the same thing with the eyes, with uh, different kinds of prescriptions and different conditions with the eyes. So now, just at first, pretend that you're staring like we were doing before, and just feel how uncomfortable that feels. Okay? And feel how many muscles are involved. Okay? And if you even now put... A, this is just in the interest of science. This will actually really help. This is really a loving thing to do for your eyes. But go ahead and actually tense them a little bit more. And notice as you do that, however you conjure that, just pretend that you can tense your eyes more. Okay, as you do that, you'll notice that your whole face gets tight, your shoulders get tight, your neck gets tight, Okay, and for some of you, this is starting to feel familiar. If you have headaches, or if you have neck aches, or if you have back aches. Okay, the good news is, these are all wired together. All these muscles, all through your body. And the good news is, that in order to improve your sight, 
you're also going to be improving the comfort in your neck and shoulders and your back. So, um, okay, so now open your eyes again and just look at this balloon. If you, and if you're on the phone, you can just keep your eyes closed if you like. Okay, so there's kind of, it's almost like there's thought energy or emotional energy going in into the eyes, making these muscles tight. Because according to Dr. Bates and according to successes that many people have, when they finally let, learn to let go of this, which could take a long time or it could happen, you know, with just one aha. Um, but once they learn to let go, the eyeball goes back to a natural round shape. And the eye loves to be in that shape. Okay. So what kinds of thoughts and what kinds of emotions are going to make this tight? Okay. Close your eyes again and just see if you can imagine that in your own life. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely blend this with the Bates techniques, but the Bates techniques can land a lot more solidly if they have this context of how and what to let go of. So now feel how that tension, that contraction, that constant contraction is in your eyes. And you think it goes away when you sleep, but it doesn't. It's with you 24 seven. Some people even strain more in their sleep than they do when they're awake. So, so this has been with you for years or maybe decades. Okay. This tension. Now just try and I'll use the word lovingly. Just ask yourself, wow, what could be the thought patterns that do this? What could be the, uh, emotions behind this. And sometimes that's easy. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, if you got glasses when you're in seventh grade, all you got to do, or uh, let's say seven years old, uh, third grade, maybe, uh, or second grade. So, so let's say now you're going back and you're imagining yourself energetically in third grade and wow, the family just moved. Or, wow, the teacher really doesn't like you. Or some other thing. You may have to, to uh, look around a little bit for it. But that's the, the energetic signature that's, that launched all the nearsightedness. So just kind of imagine all that. Okay. Now, um, boy, I, are you still with me, Reed? Read. <laughs> you yeah, still there? Yeah, you got me. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Yeah. So, so I, I kind of went off in, in the whole emotional thing there, but, but now if, if we come back and tie this to getting reduced prescriptions, it's basically we've got one, one uh, prescription going on in our mind and our emotions, and it dialed up for you that minus seven, and as long as it's dialed up to minus seven you know, whatever's causing that strain, then in order to see 2020, it requires, it requires a minus seven lens, right? Yes. Right. Okay. So they kind of like have a relationship. So now the thing is, it's hard for the eye to let go and relax uh, any further while it's still got a minus seven, which is kind of your logic, right? Yeah, right. I mean, it's, yeah. it's balanced right now, right? Yeah. So, so now you, you dropped it to a minus six, and that means these muscles can let go a little bit. But of course, take off your glasses as much as you can, and that'll let it let go even more, like a lot more. Okay. okay. Have you experimented much with taking your glasses off? Yeah, I tried to as much as possible. Cool. And um, and I did yeah. I do identify like the emotion that drives some of that tension to mm -hmm. like the you know rushing and fear and anger, right. so um, right. um, so yeah. But I I do exp I I do take off my glasses as much as possible, and I have some lenses that are even further that are even weaker than six. Also, you know I have fives. I have a I have a pair of fives also. Cool. Cool. Yeah. 
you're a good explorer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so just notice now, cause, cause you mentioned some of the perfect emotions, like what'd you say? Fear and, um, you know, uh, anger rushing around. Okay. Anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are great words. So fear, anger, rushing around, anxiety. So now everybody close your eyes and just feel how those feelings feel when they're swimming around in your body. And notice how you might have stopped breathing a little bit. And notice how, you know, if, if you kind of let your, your feelings go towards fear, that's one signature. Anger might be another rushing around might be another anxiety might be coupled with rushing around or, or, you know, they might, <laughs> they might have their magic permutations of how they work together. So, so, um, so just feeling how those muscles can operate on your eyes. Okay. And now feeling each time you step down in the prescription, whether it's nearsighted or whatever, each time you step down, it's going to really let your eyes relax more. Okay, so now you're asking, okay, well, how do I do that, right? Yeah, how do I keep, how do I, how do I keep progressing? Yes. Okay, so let's, let's do this way again. I don't know if you're here when we were doing that, but, but uh, while you're, it. okay, while you're swaying, or, or you can do the full so-called Bates Lung Swing, where you turn at the end of, as you sway each direction, you kind of turn into that direction. Okay. Well, as you're swaying back and forth, see, this is really, really important, because if you just do it like you're doing push-ups, it's not going to do any good. Okay. So more what you want to think is, as I sway back and forth, it's like I'm cleansing all this old debris. Now, you probably did get glasses in about third grade, right? Yes, fourth fourth grade. Fourth right grade. Right on the money. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, yeah, as you're kind of swinging and swaying, sounds like a song. Okay. As you're, as you're moving back and forth, pretend and feel as if, say there's this old debris kind of still swimming around inside, like cellular memories of fear and, and things that you felt when you first got glasses. Does that seem plausible? Yes, it does. Yeah. And for nearsighted, it's different places for different people. Like if you're, if you just have reading glasses, it's going to be more in your neck and your shoulders. If you're nearsighted and you have a minus seven, so you may not be aware of this yet, Reed, but but your uh, whole rib cage is is going like that. Can you kind of at least imagine that or pretend? Yeah, I can. I can feel it. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Imagine that. Okay. So as you do the sway or the swing, let it be a magic bomb. See, this is the way you want to perceive it. Let it be a magic bomb and feel as if those molecules, somebody's book title, Molecules of Emotion. See if you can allow yourself to let those be cleansed by this swaying and swinging. Does that seem plausible? Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Cool. So, so that's really it. And, and, you know, I was talking to Jermaine before the class started, the, the um, fellow from Barbados and um, uh, the thing I was pointing out about um, high prescriptions is that uh, one of the best single things you can do is get really excited about every little improvement because your eyes are kind of like kids, like children. And when you encourage them, they flourish. 
and they go, oh, wow, dad thinks I'm doing a really great job. I'm going to do an even better job. But then if you, if it, if the eyes hear you saying, oh, yeah, th nothing's really happening, then that's the idea they're going to have. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And I think that's what, that's, um, that was what was going through my mind when I, when I went back to my seven glasses. So, uh, that totally makes sense that I kind of, yeah. I just, I, I let, anyway, I let go or I stopped, I stopped celebrating the little uh -huh. relaxations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Was well, that, are there's a couple things to help you? Yeah, it's just to continue keep to it continue going. to do to keep it going and to yeah. um cel celebrate the little victories and and celebrate the the practice not not just the uh not just the number lens I'm on. Yeah. You know, like work on the practice itself. And then Great. and then do it do it um I mean as as often in a day as possible I would imagine, right? That's the that's the the kind of the routine of it yeah or the regimen the regimen now are you using i can't remember did you say you were actually using our program or are you using from i do books or yeah, yeah i use so the program so yeah check out some of the things about sketching and shifting and and yeah definitely do those as activities but also keep finding ways to do it all day long right so, right. so like whenever you you're looking around or when you're ever you're at your computer, find ways to keep moving, you know, maybe sit on a, on a, an exercise ball. Cause then that always mm -hmm. keeps you moving, you know, things like that. So, okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so Very much. Helpful. And, and uh, keep in touch. Yeah, I will. Thank oh. you so much for your program and everything. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Hi, Jermaine. Hey. Um, well, I had one more question. Sure. Um, okay. It's a miracle that you, that you got back on. It's magic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fire away. Uh, well, 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 I just clicked the mic. I just clicked the mic in the bottom left. I just clicked it. Uh huh. And it worked. So. Cool. Okay. Yeah, um. Okay. So okay, like, I go without my glasses a lot. For the for like two like two or so weeks now, I've been going without the glasses, mm -hmm. and like when I'm just outside and like looking, I can feel like kind of like a pressure um in my eyes. So is this just like my eyes trying to? This is just you, my eyes naturally trying to focus, right? Okay, here's here's what I what I'd predict. Okay, yeah. okay, let's everybody close your eyes for a second. And let's process Jermaine's question it, and, and help me see if I've got this right. But when you go without your glasses, you notice this pressure on your eyes. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So everybody close your eyes and just see if you can kind of resonate with that question that, that uh, Jermaine is asking. Okay. And now it's like when, when people, uh, first start meditating they go oh i don't like this meditation it makes my mind really noisy well <laughs> what it really means is when you meditate you start to notice how innately noisy your mind has been all this time so i think what this might be is the same phenomenon where this is a tightness that now you're being given the grace of noticing it so the higher a prescription is, the better uh, a person becomes at hiding it from themselves. So often a person with a high prescription <coughs> is actually going to be less bothered by it than a, you know, as far as moment to moment, than a person with a low prescription. Because the person with a high prescription has become an absolute professional at holding their, their eyes so tight. Does that make sense? So this is actually really, 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 really good news. Okay. And so, so again, just if, as you do some swaying, 
just really put your imagination in there and, and pretend that you can feel as you sway, all that old tension is breaking up. And, and a lot of you know I, I'm very fond of EFT tapping. Uh, that's another doorway that can help dissolve maybe even specific things. And, uh, and also, like on the CDs, I use a lot of guided visualization to help people uh, find a relaxing spot. So is that a good, a good uh, reply? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jermaine. <laughs> okay, so, um, so here's my story. It sounds like Jermaine figured out the magic trick. If somebody would like to just click on their microphone in the lower left and uh, make it come on and say hi, let's let's see if that works. I'm just going to say hi for a second. Okay, this will hey, be a that worked. This will be a little crazy. But now, right now, it'll get too loud. It'll get too loud in a second. Yeah, it's actually working. How about that? Now we all yeah. want to ask questions. Hello? Oh, oh I know what I'll ask. I know what I'll ask. Could, could most of you go ahead and turn off uh, your mics? And put, somebody start talking to me that wants to stick around for a question. Okay, I'm here. Can you hear me? Sure. Who, who have I got? This is Dean. Dean. Okay. Hi. And where are you from, Dean? Uh, California. All right. And, uh, yeah, far away. So, for nearsightedness, mm -hmm. what do you think of the efficacy of printing uh, um, an eye chart off the Internet just on a regular sized piece of paper and hanging it on the wall and then looking at say the the the, the bottom line the smallest letters um, without any glasses and say covering one eye and just relax and do that for a minute or two and then switch in terms of um, you know detraining yourself to let go of that tension even though in my case, I have to stand about eight inches from the wall. Okay, so you have a strong prescription. Yeah. Do you know what it is? Negative 7.50 for contacts. Oh, okay, for contacts, which means it's even a little higher for glasses. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Just because they sit further out from the eyeball, they have to be a little higher. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but, I, but, I wear, but I wear negative 6.0. Oh, cool. Because I had an old pair and I just wear them. Great, great. Okay. Well, here let let me uh, echo your question back. Um, if I uh, alternate left eye, right eye, see the the thing that's tricky about nearsightedness, at least, you know, I I certainly found it true in my case, is that there's a propensity that nearsighted people have to to complicate things and perfect things and I'm and I'm just being a little playful uh, here but a lot of times like people that are listening right now if they have a real high prescription they might relate to this that often they'll keep trying to come up with a better uh, design so that they can perfect it and and um, in the case of, you know, I, I certainly found this true for myself and a lot of other people resonate with it. In the case of high prescriptions, sometimes people have trouble even getting things completed because they're so good at starting new things and perfecting what they already have. So I'd actually say it's cool. As long as you're actually doing it, anything is great. But, but don't fall into the trap I did for so long of... Um, always perfecting, always perfecting, always perfecting, rather than joyfully, happily, lovingly just doing it. So, um, but it, it, it sounds like you're going with reduced glasses, and it sounds like you're on a roll. Are, the, are those... Yeah, accurate? see, I, 
Uh, it's been a while since I read his book, but I actually read that in Bates's book. That he told someone to do that, and they had a big improvement. So cool. I, I didn't know if, if you know, people you worked with were doing that kind of thing. If you, well, the you thing know. is, Bates was a very creative man, and if you want to get a, a sense of fully what, what he, or more fully what he did, he, there's these Bates magazines that scope, uh, they're put out monthly for 11 years, and it's just a, it's a beautiful book. The published version is huge. And it's, it'll, it'll keep your coffee table from floating up in the living room. Um, but it's, it's a wonderful book. And, and even though a lot of the stories are, are nearly 100 years old, it's, it reads in a very contemporary way. So he said that, you know, we have a million different ways of straining. And likewise, there's a million different creative ways of resolving it. But the bottom line is, is, and you use the word, I think, is relaxing. So I just heard things get mysteriously quiet again. Uh-oh. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. So, um, all right. I have a question, yeah. Greg. So, okay, so thanks, Dean. Is that, is that uh, a little bit of a, a reply? I mean, I'd say follow what works. You know. So. Um, okay. Well, I just remember reading it, and I thought, well, that sounds easy. Cool. Just use one easy. eye, then do the other. I easy is good. Easy is good, know. but relaxation is king. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, right. well, thanks so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. I've lost your video. And, and who, the woman who just said hi? Oh, yeah, that was me, Greg, Pamela. Pamela. Yeah, I appreciate your tenacity to keep this thing going. Oh, I'm so sorry that it's annoying. I, there's a fellow, one of the vision coaches uh, that went through my training is in Sweden. Yeah. And we're both trying to befriend all these different creatures of, of uh, you know, we both appreciate the value of webinar. And also, also Fuse, as you can see, when it's working, the reception is just amazing. Yeah, and I would love to show you Google Hangouts. I've been working with that for about a year and absolutely love it. It's it's really simple. So if you ever uh, want, well, if, I'll I'll send you an you, email. If you feel really organized, I was going to say send me an email. I'd love to explore yeah. that. I I it's it could be the the next thing. Yeah, I'll send you an email after we're done. But my question, and I can relate to the last guy as far as making things overly complicated. Um, and that well, helps. Well, maybe, to... maybe. I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to put him in a box or anything. Right. Because I, I think he was making, a, I think Dean was making a pretty creative suggestion. Yeah, I guess I was just yeah. thinking of it from my world. You know, I can uh -huh. see where I fall into that. Yeah. But my question for you is, um, my natural path gave me these little tiny magnets, and I put them on my shoulders because I, I have a tendency to keep my shoulders high. And then I thought, why not put them around my eyes? So I've been putting four of them on my eyebrows and the outside of my eye. Have you had much um, experience with doing magnet work? You know, somebody makes an eye cover. Um, what's the magnet company, the Japanese one? That... Oh, the Nikon, I think it is. Nikon, I believe they actually make an eye mask, which... It, it seemed at the when I first came across it, it seemed so outrageously expensive that I never bought one. But but now you've yeah. got me curious. Well, you know, I um, first heard about this from Dr. Brian Clement down at Hippocrates. And I was in one of his seminars and he was just like, oh, yeah, you can get your natural vision back. Like it was no big deal. And one of the things he talked about was using magnets. And, and what's had, your success so far? Well, you know, I've just been doing it for about a week, but I have high hopes for it. Cool. Oh, um, wow. I'd, I'd love to hear how that goes. Yeah, they're just little tiny magnets. My natural path had them for $5 a piece, so they're pretty inexpensive. And, and do they I, like, they have little pieces of tape or something? Yeah, like yeah, just like a little Band-Aid type thing, but it sticks yeah. on pretty well. I haven't had them fall off at night at all. Cool. We'll, we'll get some data and, and let us know how that goes. Yeah. Well, that sounds um, splendid. Yeah, it's fun to try it. And I, yeah. I also had a little crack in my lens, so I put my old glasses on, and I was like, oh, my gosh, 
So I know that my eyes are getting better, even though it's been over four years. And I'm like, you know, I think I, I wrote in the chat earlier, it's like I'm, I'm like this authority figure saying, oh, it should be faster. And I realized my parents always had this tendency to want us to go faster. So I need to compliment my eyes and say, take right. as much time as you need. It's fine. You're doing a great job. Yeah, there's another way to say that, too. And, you know, that often and our parents, you know, they're, they love us and they do what they do. And we love our kids and we do the best we can. But sometimes another way to think of that is not just that they're trying to make us go faster, but that whatever we do doesn't measure up. Uh huh. And that's like the perfect storm for uh, starting to need glasses. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. Well, thanks. well, thanks. Thank you for persevering too, Pamela. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah it's kind of fun. I really appreciate it. Now, maybe maybe go ahead and and mute and I will. And I'll see if anybody else is able to jump in by. Okay. Greg. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, hello, hello, Greg. Who was the first one, the woman that... This is Terry. Did you say Terry? Terry, yes. Okay. Um, I seem to have a chronic conjunctivitis that um, eye drops with steroids and everything didn't really help. Um, could this be related to eye tension? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think so? I just wonder if it could be. I mean... I have had a lot of eye tension. And I have another weird thing, which is I have one nearsighted eye and one farsighted eye. Okay. I, mean, I think that's just strange. <laughs> um, some people have that. Um, which, one's, which one's nearsighted? Uh, right eye. And the left one is farsighted. For many, many years, I <clears throat> didn't need glasses because I just use one eye or the other so i have a oh, slight right. muscle, a slight muscle imbalance so one because, eye takes over close and one eye takes over in the distance yeah and it worked really well but now neither one is as clear as it used to be yeah so i do occasionally wear glasses yeah okay is there um, any hope that well, one, yeah. one kind of fun thing to think of is the right side is the dad side the left side is the mom side oh yeah. And and that you can just play with that and see if it if it uh, oh. brings true any oh, yeah. um, and you know as far as balancing because mm -hmm. because like nearsightedness usually means that it's comfortable being close and farsighted maybe means it's like okay that's close enough and in a way you know that might seem backwards but but it still might be worth looking at like that maybe it's easier to be closer to your dad. And I'm really like reaching out. I mean, I, I shouldn't do that, you know, with, without really knowing anything, but it's just, it's fun things to explore. Are you still there, Terry? I am. I'm still here. Yes. Okay. Now the conjunctivitis, that is so gr such a good question. And do you mind if I kind of sort of lump that with dry eyes? I mean, it's not the same, but it could be related, right? Did you say dry eyes? I do have dry eyes. Okay. Good. So, I mean, good, yeah. <laughs> so, so everybody, uh, let's do some palming just for a second. And you can actually just do it and we'll clean up the technique later. But basically, it's one palm is over the left eye. I usually do that one first. And then I do the palm over the right eye and let my fingers cross a bit. And then I just sort of let my hands melt into my face as you feel your eyes relaxing and relaxing it's almost as if you can feel them going back to their natural round shape and you can feel those muscles letting go letting go And even all the background noise in our imperfect system, somehow it just helps the isolate go more and more. 
and all those muscles we were talking about earlier are letting go and all the thoughts that were holding those muscles in place whether they're worry or anxiety or stress those thoughts are starting to melt away and your hands are melting even more into your face and how does that feel so far? Wonderful. Okay. Now what you'll notice if you do that for just a few minutes, you may notice it already, is now if you uncover your eyes, they might be a bit more moist. And if you don't notice it yet, after the, the uh, webinar tonight, try this for like... Try it for like uh, 10 minutes or, or 15 or 20 minutes and I bet you'll notice that your eyes will become more moist. And um, is that a helpful doorway anyhow? Uh, Terry? I uh, can't really... I heard you say, can you hear me, but uh, it's pretty faint. Oh, well, yes. The answer is yes, I appreciate it. I think that's, that's something good for me to explore. Yeah, palming could be a great help. Sunning, which you can easily learn about, will also be a great help. It seems paradoxical because sunning seems like it would dry out your eyes, but it's very healing, and, it, and it'll be very good for the... And, okay, i got to say, I, I always have to throw in I am not a doctor and I'm not trying to replace one and you should definitely see a professional practitioner like you mentioned a naturopath um, but um, yeah I, I predict that that you'll get really good results from those from palming and uh, and sunning I don't know what sunning is I, I got oh look it up on the on the web Okay. Uh, okay. Or if you look it up on Mercola.com, you'll see a picture of me and a little article I wrote. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. So, okay. Yeah. Thank thanks a lot, that. Terry. Yes. Thank you. Oh, and go ahead and go ahead and, uh, oh, the microphones are back. Okay. So if anybody else would like to ask. Hello, me, Greg. Yeah. Hello, Greg. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm calling from Sydney, Australia. Great. And which... I have pretty bad glaucoma in both yeah. eyes. I've had a rotten trabeculectomy, which is where they drill a permanent hole in your eye, and that's caused all sorts of complications with tear drainage uh, being obstructed and turning into mucus, etc. So that's one problem, and just the glaucoma, which health professionals seem only able to... Um, not stop. So I'd like to frame both of those as a question if I may. Okay. So one is the surgery that you've had that you'd like to you'd like to get the best result you can, right? I get look, I guess the more important question is what would your advice be for someone who has got glaucoma in both eyes and is going blind? Despite taking pressure relieving drops and all the things that the medical community can do it okay. just slows it down it doesn't actually stop it yeah well here's here's everybody's wired a little differently but here's a you know I've worked with a lot of different people with a lot of different conditions and uh, people with glaucoma often if you think of it here I don't know if you have a computer screen but your eyeballs now, it seems really quiet. Is everybody still with me? I think for the rest. Oh, okay, okay good. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. Now, good. Okay, so, um, so if you... Can you hear if, me? I can. Oh, were you looking for another question? Oh, I was still going to uh, respond to the fellow from Sydney. Oh, sure. But, Sorry. But, but what's your name? And I'll keep you in the queue here. Uh, it's Faye. Faye? Yeah. Okay, Faye, thanks. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. I'll be right back with you. 
And then um, Sydney, I, I don't know your first name, but um, Sydney's fine. Oh, okay. We'll call you Sydney. <laughs> okay. So, so this eyeball has all this pressure. And see, as as you realize, I I'm more I'm pretty fascinated with the emotional aspect of this. See, ideally, all the fluid's going to mo be moving. You know, the vis the vitreous and the aqueous fluid, and then you know, getting back into the elimination system of the body. And so what happens in glaucoma is is this route for the pressure to balance itself. It's a circular channel in the front of the eye. It, it gets plugged up. And so um, just imagine if you have tension like this with muscles in your eyes, well, some of those muscles are up in the front of the eyes, you know, around the lens. Um, like I was talking about earlier for presbyopia, it would also be relevant for cataracts. Okay, so so those muscles, I'm just squeezing this balloon, just showing how would you feel if you were an eyeball being squeezed like this? Okay, so yeah. so now you think, well, how do I let go of this? Well, for glaucoma in particular, what I've found is, well, Louise Hay uses the word resentment, um, or you know she, that it's hard to forgive somebody for something, and and resentment sometimes works too. So just see if that might possibly be true. And I'll tell you a story of of uh, one woman who uh, she was in a desperate situation and she was about to go in for surgery, and her doctor told her that she had already lost about half of her vision in her left eye. So what's interesting in her case, she didn't have any glaucoma in her other eye. And, um, and I think, she, I, I can't remember what her score was, but it was quite high, the pressure. And then, um, so we did some EFT tapping, you know, which is good for relieving emotions. And, and I try, I always try not to have too much of an agenda, but I was open to this thing of is there anybody who's frustrating you in your life right now? And she came around to that her mom, who she absolutely adored, was starting to get like really annoying. And as soon as she tapped on that, and as soon as we did the EFT, it just, it's just like the dam burst and it let go. And she was belly laughing before you knew it. And, and, and also in that session, all of a sudden, she, what had been kind of resentment towards her mom actually washed back out, and, and she felt very loving towards her mom, and she felt more confident that she could uh, uh, help her mom out but not get swallowed whole, which, which was what she needed. So then she goes back to the eye doctor, and the eye doctor goes, wow, the medication must be finally kicking in. Because her her glaucoma had had just it it come down in the normal range. So why well, uh, uh, my question, Greg, and thank thank you for that is I've meditated for twenty or thirty years. I've mm -hmm. been trying EFT. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. I've lost eighty percent of my right eye and fifty of my left. Um, I have low tension glaucoma, which means at very low pressures I start to lose eyesight, which mm -hmm. I guess makes things a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. um, I'll certainly try more EFT, and I am, you know, sympathetic. Oh, and Laura, Laura just left me a note here too. Um, <laughs> she also did palming seven times a day. She was really cute because um, I wanted her to do some palming, you know, to just kind of circulate that relaxation. And so I told her to do um, palming six six times a day for ten minutes a day. And she was really cute when she reported back to me. She said, I did exactly what you said. I, I did 10 minutes at a time, seven times a day. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, see what you can get with that. And I, I also offer uh, individual coaching. I'll put that out in general. If you ever feel like you'd be interested in that, I do mainly uh, Skype sessions. Phone is okay. Skype is a little better. Yeah. Um, and and that might might be an angle, or also listen to some of my other webinars because because we get into stuff like this too, and 
and you know something might just click and that's but just quickly where are your other webinars Greg pardon me where would we find your other webinars uh, you could look me up on YouTube or uh, if you look on my website there's which is better eyesight now dot com uh, you'll find uh, a YouTube page and it has just a few different things thank you yeah yeah so so I'll still call you Sydney and and uh, say thanks thanks for your question thanks Greg. so so it's about 8 15 when I said I was gonna stop I I'd, I'd like to to go ahead back to Faye at least and partly because I've just been dragging a little bit because of all the the um, confusion with the sound so Faye are you still around I'm here. Cool. Can you hear? I, I can hear my, you. Okay. My question is about light sensitivity. Um, oh, just for fun, can I, ask, can I ask where you're from? The Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. Okay. Oh, okay. Did you talk right before class two? Were you one of the... Yes. Yeah, where we had the, the big slew of Canadians? Oh, okay. yeah, I was yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Okay, so so sorry. Go ahead. Um, light sensitivity and eye pain after, uh, like it's just been ongoing for years since the surgery. So ways to it, it would be nice to master it and you know get rid of that problem. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm so glad you asked that because I I got a lot of questions too about um now you had a surgery of what sort i had a radial keratotomy for um significant uh, astigmatism oh okay and did you have that somewhat recently or back in the day oh way back 25 years ago right right okay because i i don't think they're really doing that in in lieu of lasik now but i'm glad you asked that Partly because just the whole question of surgery on the eyes, I've, I've just learned some really interesting things about that. Um, so I, I think the best way is, um, here, everybody close your eyes for a minute, and your situation may be different. Like for, for Faye, it's light sensitivity and, um, uh, and eye pain, which seems to be a fallout from a, the... The surgery and that surgery again was for what uh, thing? astigmatism oh I see so you were having an uh, elective just, like nearsightedness just, plus astigmatism probably right yes yeah okay cool okay so so here's what I've come up with okay so close your eyes I'll close mine too and um, and everybody, imagine your eyes, especially if you have cataract or you've had cataract surgery or several people wrote that they've had LASIK and, wow, can I still improve my eyesight? Here's what I believe. Here's what I feel I've learned. Okay, I was in a car accident, uh, wow, like 30 years ago. And um, and I'm, not, I'm still not sure whether it was glass or metal that scraped into my right eye. And it went so far into my eye, or, or towards my eyeball, that the, the guy in the emergency room said, I couldn't have gotten that close without surgically without taking your eye out. So it's kind of a miracle. But, but meantime, just feel how my eye uh, might have been pretty scared after that. And um, here, I'll, this story might, might seem weird, but, but go with me for a second. Okay, so I was very deep into martial art, and my um, and my teacher kept hitting me there, and you know I, I had like forty stitches just uh, on my forehead going down way down into my eyelid, and you know multiple layers of stitches, and and every time he hit me, we had mirrors in the dojo, and I would look and I'd sneak a look because I thought I'd be bleeding everywhere, and so what he was doing was. In reality, he was he was tapping me like a feather, but he was trying to help me desensitize, and I came to realize that 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 was a really fortunate thing. 
because then when I got more involved in the vision coaching, I, it first came up when I, I met a woman at a fair who she had been hit with a baseball bat, you, you know, playing baseball and somebody followed, you know, followed through too much. I guess she was a catcher and, um, and, uh, a year later she got, uh, a cataract. And, and then I started to realize that, oh, this is a normal medical phenomenon. After you have an impact injury, you may have a, a, a cataract or some other development later, or in your case, you, you said eye pain, light sensitivity. Um, so here's what I've come up with. And that is that all these muscles in the eyes and and maybe even the vitreous of the eyes. It's, it's almost like they have a personality, you know, and, and, and they maybe, you know, maybe they never really understood what was happening with the radial keratotomy and maybe they kind of got scared. And so even now you can bless that surgery and you can bless your cornea, corneas, and can you kind of feel that as I say it? Yeah. In fact, when you were talking about um, it, it, the the impact to the eyes, or you, you uh, when you first started talking about it, I just the memory came back that um, after the surgery, it was like my brain would just reproduce the cutting of, of the eye again. It was like it would see mm -hmm. it again. So it was mm -hmm. it was a trauma. Like you know, I I, I know it was like a. Um, involuntary recall that that would just come mm -hmm. back after right after the yeah. surgery a couple of times so yeah it, it was yeah. a trauma to the eyes to, to have that actual cutting i remember that yeah and see so, all these years later you can still uh reach back in time and change that by reaching into your cells you know with eft uh with with palming with I, and i really liked your visual sorry to cut you off greg because i oh. know you're your, your info is so important, but I really loved your visual on uh, the balloon, the eye looking like the uh, like a balloon. So to try <laughs> to picture my eye going back to that round shape. Uh -huh. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's, even as you do that right now, even as you say it, doesn't that feel great to think of your eye having that round shape? It just makes your eye feel more free floating, right? It gives me a sense that I maybe can control this and get my eyes back to the way God created them before I, I had the surgery and before, you know, muscles in life happened. <laughs> right, right. And, and um, you know, sometimes uh, I'll mention cataracts again, too, because, uh, you know, a lot of people, especially if they've been into natural approaches, they start, they might start kicking themselves and beating themselves up and like, Oh, gee, I don't want to do this surgery. But the thing is, once you have reached a tipping point and you decide to do a surgery, the best thing is to throw all of your heart into it and to um, bless it and to visualize uh, the surgeon being at the top of their game and to visualize whoever else is involved in the room, you know, that everything is great and to envision yourself getting up and opening your eyes and going, wow, this is so great. And, and, um, and see, you can do all that ret retrospectively and retroactively. I'm going to do that. I'm going to try it because, yeah, uh, you giving your example of having had an accident. Okay. So that was, you didn't choose for that, but that's an impact. So, so what I chose this surgery, but same thing. It's my eyeball doesn't really know the difference, right? And if, if you right. manage to heal from yours, then it, uh, that's uh, you're a lot, you know, you're yeah. an awesome. Example, well, so. here I'll I'll just tell one more little anecdote, and then and then we'll close out this uh, webinar. But this is is not an eye story, but it's a surgery story, and it it really gave me a lot of insight. My mother had a um, a knee replacement surgery. Uh, I guess she was in her late seventies. And, um, and it worked pretty well, but she was always saying like, oh, there's something down there. There's something not right. There must be a screw coming loose. And she always felt unsettled about it. And it had been, I don't know, maybe a couple of years. And, 
And, um, and so I was down in Arizona in Sun City West. It's near the White Tank Mountains. And there's this path that we always, it was our family favorite place to go for walks. And if you kept going on this path, it would get into some pretty serious rocks that you had to step up onto and keep going up and up. They were like boulders. And so we got to that place and I said, oh, well, yeah, you probably want to turn around. And she, oh, I'd like to keep going. So it's like I pull her up on this rock and she gets up on that one. I pull her up on this other one. And then now once we're up there, then we can walk back further. There's a little waterfall, that, which in Arizona was like a, <laughs> a trickle. <laughs> but um, when she, as soon as she got to that waterfall, she had made peace with that surgery. It was, oh. The deal was done. She always, after that, she always felt good about her knee. Interesting. So I think that's, it just gave me some real insights about, you know, how we think about our eyes and how we behold our eyes. And then especially maybe if there's a case of surgery. While I still have your, your undivided attention, I, I'm mm -hmm. just wondering too about TMJ in relation to it. Like my, my jaw tightened. I think you're brilliant to wonder that. Yeah. I mean, there's people that do wonderful TMJ work, uh, but but yeah, I, I think TMJ can be removed from the inside too. I I think you're dead on. So, um, can I talk myself out of it, or are you are you thinking uh, a TMJ specialist as opposed or or alongside with the advice you've given, or? Well, I mean, the, the, a, a true master at TMJ stuff is they have such a nice touch. You might as well take advantage of it, right? It feels good, right? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know in I mean, who that would be. Some but... massage therapists do it. Some dentists do it. Um, I, I actually don't know a lot about TMJ. I've never struggled with it myself. But um, but but I I. Th I've seen so many different things evaporate when people uh, improve their eyesight, like chronic debilitating pain uh, can just vanish, you know, because, you know, okay, I'll just mention this, uh, a little cross training. I, I really like John Sarno, who wrote several books about how to perceive back pain. And he's, an eye, he's a back doctor, a surgeon who did thousands of surgeries and then abruptly stopped because uh, he said, I think there's a better way. And it was, it was dead on the same as the Bates method. And uh, read one of uh, John Sarno's books. He's written several. Uh, and, and it'll give you some insights about TMJ and, and using a Bates-like approach. S-A-R-N-A, Sarna? S A. R N O John Sarno. Sarno. Okay. For instance, uh, mind over back pain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What a great cross training book. So, okay. So, um, so uh, I really appreciate. Oh, thank you, Faye. <laughs> thank you, and and. Uh, all of the Canadians that y'all showed up at the same time. That was very fun. So, okay, well, keep me posted, uh, Faye, and okay. also anybody else. Okay, I guess I'll take my, turn my mic off. Thank you. Okay, okay. Or, or you can leave it on and we'll all sign off here, anybody. Oh, I see Arlene. And there's Warren. There's Warren. Who was trying to... Who was trying to... Oh, darn. Oh, hello? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Okay. Hi. So it looks like we better sign off now. <laughs> but um, thanks everybody so much. Thank you so much. And uh, oh, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay. And um, <laughs> keep me posted with, with any successes <laughs> and questions <laughs> and echoes. Echoes. And more echoes. <laughs> Okay, thanks everybody and good night.